Okay, so let's talk about the DJI Osmo 360. Now this camera has been anticipated for uh, quite a while. So this is DJI's first foray into 360 cameras. It's being marketed as an action camera and that's how I'm going to look at it in terms of this review. Now I'm not going to give you a feature by feature spec list. Um, that's available elsewhere. There are hundreds of videos uh, telling you which modes are available on this camera. I want to talk more about what it's like to use and how practical it is in the various scenarios in which I would use it in or I would want to use it in. But let's start from the top and take a look at the build quality and the overall form factor. Now, 360 cameras are a lot larger than traditional action cameras, uh, which is why um, I often don't use them on a helmet so, so much. Um, the Insta360 cameras, for example, are quite tall and you need, you need an adapter in order to be able to turn them horizontally. Now, the DJI camera is a lot less tall, um, but it is still a lot larger than a traditional action camera like the um, Action 5 or a GoPro. But overall build quality on this camera is very good, as you'd expect. I mean, it's got a very solid feel to it. What I'm glad to see is that the door openings on the side use a little latch. Um, they feel a lot more solid. You can't accidentally open them, which was a criticism that was leveled at the Osmo Action 5 Pro. You have to move a little latch horizontally before you then slide the door down to release and open it. It's a much more solid system and you'll be able to rely on this um, a lot more in environments such as diving, for example. I have heard stories of people with the Osmo Action 5 Pro uh, not closing the door properly or accidentally opening the door underwater and thereby nerfing their camera. So it's good to see the new redesign on this and hopefully we'll see that new door design on any future standard action camera from DJI 2. It has a large touchscreen display on the back. It's very responsive. It uses basically the same interface as the Osmo Action 5 Pro, so it'll be very familiar to anyone who's used it. And those who haven't used a DJI um, action camera before, you'll be able to easily find your way around. It's very intuitive um, and the modes are very clear to see and set up. Now, just briefly on the sort of tech specifications of this camera, I don't want to go too much in depth on that. Again, it's been covered in lots of other videos. Um, it uses a one inch sensor and the unique thing about this sensor is that it is square. What this means is that when the spherical image from these lenses are projected onto the sensor, much more of the sensor area is being utilized compared with a rectangular sensor that's used in other 360 cameras. Now this has a knock-on effect on power usage, to, to name one advantage, uh, because if those pixels are unused, then they're still drawing power from the battery. So this means that the the DJI Osmo 360 um, is using many more actual photosites on the sensor and there's less redundant photosites uh, being used up and using power without actually giving you any practical um, recorded image. Now something that is relevant for me is the lens design. Now you won't see a massive amount of footage in this review and that is simply because I'm afraid to use this camera where I would like to use it. As anyone who watches this channel knows, I'm a kayaker, that's my main chosen sport and this is where I use these cameras uh, the most. Um, I'm not generally a vlogger, um, so I like to be able to use these cameras for POV on, on a kayaking helmet uh, or on a mountain bike. And the fact that these lenses are not user replaceable causes a bit of uh, a problem in that regard. Because, you know, if I put this on a kayaking helmet, it sits pretty tall um, on it. And if I go upside down, rivers aren't always that deep. There's a very high chance that uh, this thing could get smashed quite easily. I don't have a very good track record with reviewing uh, action cameras in the past two years. I've, I've broken a few of them. You know, if I go out with this on, on a kayak, and I happen to go over because I'm trying stuff for the, you know, to record to get decent looking footage. Once this lens gets, or once any of these lenses get smashed, then game over, you know, and especially um, underwater, that's going to affect the waterproofing. And I would probably not just smash the lens, it would probably destroy the camera as a whole. 
that's obviously something that I don't want, want to happen. So I've been very conservative in how I've been using this camera. Now, DJI probably started designing this camera before the X5 was released. The X5 from Insta360, um, for those who don't know, has user replaceable lenses, which means that when you smash them, doesn't matter where you are, you can replace them without having to send it off for repair. But as I say, if I smash the lenses on this in an underwater scenario, that could actually mean uh, water getting into the camera as a whole and basically destroying it. Now, the other factor is, is that this is a lot heavier than a traditional action camera and it sits a lot taller as well. So when I mount this on a helmet, it's quite unwieldy. I can end up hitting it accidentally quite a lot uh, with the paddle shaft um, and that can mean you damage the lenses, you can scratch them. So the fact that they're not user replaceable is quite a big minus in my eyes. For a lot of people who are just vlogging, you know, it might not be such, such an issue, but with 360 cameras, it's very easy to scratch or damage the lenses just by taking them out of your bag. You can just put it on, on the ground next to you just while you set something else up and it can accidentally fall over. So you know, these lenses are pretty vulnerable and I think now that Insta360 has shown the way with these replaceable lenses, it's it's a must for any future 360 camera. We know from GoPro's social media that the forthcoming Max 2 also has user replaceable lenses. So yeah, this is, this is a minus point for this camera, quite a big one in my eyes. I know that DJI will likely make user replaceable lenses for any future version of this camera, that's a given, um, but it does put this camera at a major disadvantage compared with uh, the competition and the forthcoming uh, competition at the moment. Now, battery life wise, this camera is exceptionally good. I did a test with it side by side with the X5 and I found that this outlasted it um, quite, to quite a degree. I put them both in the same kind of mode. Uh, it's 8K 24 frames a second um, in 360. And I didn't actually get to see how long this lasted because my SD card actually ran out before uh, the battery did. I still had about 20% uh, battery left. So the X5 cut out um, at around the point where this still had around 20% uh, battery life left on it. But as I say, I ran out of SD card storage space before I managed to see exactly how long it went on for. But uh, either way, this the power on this is very good. It will last you for a long time and it uses the same batteries as your Osmo Action 5 Pro as well. So um, you can get um, exceptionally long uh, life out of this with a couple of batteries. You could probably go all day for most of your needs. Uh, so it's good to see that, particularly given that it has these large one inch sensors you know, you would have thought, you know, and dual centers at that. So you would have expected the power draw to be uh, pretty high, um, but it does seem very efficient. Uh, that's good to see. And obviously battery life is an incredibly um, important aspect of these cameras. And particularly for me, because I don't like having to change batteries halfway through the day, particularly in British weather in the winter. It's not a good place to be when it's pouring down with rain and you have to change battery over. So yeah. Um, good plus point on, on that front. Mounting wise, it has DJI's magnetic clip mount system, but it also has a one quarter inch thread on the bottom as well. So you can screw it directly to selfie poles and make sure you get that exact alignment. And um, that said, DJI also has its own special magnetic mount that is designed for this camera that will rotate precisely to 90 degrees. It'll um, clip into place so you can change the angle of it, but you know that when you put it vertically, it is snapped directly um, vertically and you will not see uh, the selfie pole. Now, image quality wise, that's, that's an interesting one with this camera. When I've compared it with the X5, to my eyes, I do notice that this camera has more detail um, than the X5 does. The only thing is it, it seems to inherit a similar issue to the Action 5 Pro and that's that the tone mapping or the HDR processing as it might be sometimes called but it's tone mapping where <clears throat> it tries to cram more dynamic range into the image. It creates certain artifacts uh, particularly around trees. If you have say a tree line against a blue sky uh, you'll notice that there's this kind of strange white haloing around the edges of the trees. It's a problem that is on the Osmo Action 5 Pro as well. And there are lots of user comments if you go to the DJI forum asking for this to be solved. 
along with some of the, some of the other issues that it creates. Um, you can get slightly plasticky looking skin um, as a result of this, this processing. And it can tend to look a little digitally over sharp, even when you've dialed the sharpness settings right down to a minimum. But um, the haloing around the edges of trees on Skylines for me, it's something that is quite, quite annoying. It doesn't need to be that way. I would like the option to be able to turn off the tone mapping um, if possible. Um, I know that on the Osmo Action 5, some people have found a workaround by turning off the ISO range mode. So it's specifically setting a, a dedicated ISO mode, a fixed ISO mode. But the problem with that is that the camera can't then properly um, auto adjust the exposure because it relies on the ability to go between ISO ranges. But it seems it's something to do with um, the camera recording two separate ISOs possibly, and then merging the two together to get this, uh, to get more dynamic range into the image. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but theoretically um, that might be how it, how it, how it does it. Um, and by fixing the ISO, you can kind of have a kind of workaround to get around this, this HDR processing, but that's not ideal. Um, I, I would like to see DJI address this um, it wasn't present on the likes of the Action 4, and it's interesting that it's present on this camera, given it uses two totally different sensors to the ones on the that are on the Osmo Action 5 Pro. And yes, I have noticed it's also occurring even in the D-Log M mode as well. So, you know, in general, yes, it produces a clean, detailed image, uh, particularly for a 360 camera. Um, given what 360 cameras used to be like, the quality was used to be pretty terrible when you punched in to do a reframe uh, for you know, standard video output. But these modern cameras, they produce a high resolution detailed result, but we need issues like this um, to go away. DJI needs to take note of these, these artifacts. They are objectionable as far as I'm concerned. It just creates a very artificial look to the image. Um, and as a as a user that wants ultimate control, particularly if the kind of person who uses the D-Log M, you want control over the image. Um, these HDR modes or you know, tone mapping modes, they're great for users who want an image straight out of the box. It's going to have great dynamic range and all the rest of it. Uh, but for people who want a more naturalistic looking image, we've got to be able to turn these functions off so that we can tune them, you know, in post and in grading. And particularly with the sharpness settings, if I reduce the sharpness down to a minimum, I want that off. I want the sharpness to be off. I don't want any digital um, edge enhancement in the image. That's why I've put it down to minimum in the first place. So yeah, it's a problem that also afflicts the Osmo Action 5 Pro as well. Um, I'm hoping that DJI is taking notes and for the Osmo Action 6 and any success to this camera, um, these problems won't, won't happen. You know, and yes, it does sound like I'm being harsh. DJI probably won't be too happy with me saying this, um, but I have to point these, these things out. Otherwise, the cameras don't get better. I'm not doing it to be overly critical, but there's a lot of competition out there now. And, you know, if you're comparing cameras and, you know, you see what the competition is doing um, and they don't have these kinds of issues going on, well, you know, I need to point that out to you. On the plus side, you know, this camera is fast to power up. It's easy to use. As I said, generally the image is, you know, very, you know, detailed and high quality. Plus it also has the low light modes as well um, and single lens mode. So you can use it as a traditional um, action camera lens vulnerability aside. Something that is important to mention is that if you're a fan of higher frame rates, the Osmo 360 can record at up to 50 frames per second in 8K mode. This is something that none of the current competition is capable of doing. Most of them are limited to a maximum of 30 frames per second. You can go even higher on the Osmo 360 if you drop the resolution down to 6K or 4K, but it is important to note that it does have um, that unique position of being able to record at up to 50 frames per second um, in the 8K recording mode.
Now the Osmo 360 has a specific low light mode called Super Night Mode. Um, I've recorded some examples here, as you can see in pretty dark conditions, very windy and rainy as well, and it seems to do a pretty good job. I've also recorded some examples using the standard video mode as well, and again this seems to perform uh, remarkably well considering it wasn't designed uh, for low light. Now I recorded these mistakenly I might add uh, without turning the anti-motion blur option on. Now what this does is it increases the shutter speed at the expense of a little bit of a darker picture but it ensures that the stabilization um, is slightly better in these sorts of circumstances. Now I've also got an example here using the selfie mode and what this does is it tracks you in camera, it gives you a flat uh, video output so it's not 360 um, but it means you can move the camera around and it will automatically track you and save you from having to do that tracking um, in post. It also has compatibility with the DJI uh, mic series which means that it's great for vlogging and it connects really quickly um, to the mic system and you know I'm going to be looking at the uh, mic 3 which I've got here as well in a future video but it's really versatile in terms of audio and things like that. Now one little uh, other anomaly with this camera I've noticed uh, with this particular firmware I don't know if they've changed it since uh, the time of recording this but if I put the camera into single lens mode I don't have 24p available to me on this model. This is a European model, I only have 25p, but I can put it into 24p mode in 360 mode. So that's another strange um, thing with the camera. Hopefully again, uh, DJI will update this in the future to allow 24p in the single lens mode. So the question then comes to who would this camera suit? For me, as an action camera, as a replacement for the Action 5 Pro or a GoPro or an Insta360 Ace Pro. Um, the vulnerability of the lens is a pretty, bit of a deal breaker for me. So for pure action camera use, I can't really recommend um, this camera. However, for more subdued uses, for vlogging, for doing your holiday videos, and that kind of thing, then yeah, it, it's it's great. It's, it's not a bad camera, it, don't get me wrong. I know I've been quite critical of some aspects of the image. It's not a bad camera. It's just that when you put it in the context of the competition, plus the potential of the forthcoming competition uh, in the form of the GoPro Max 2, you know, I have to look at it in those, in those terms. And like I said, the lack of the user replaceable lenses means as an action camera, um, or a pure action camera, um, it's not as practical as those other cameras. You're going to be worrying about damaging these lenses all the time. For helmet use as well, um, I do find it a bit too heavy and a bit too tall still, particularly when you're mounting it on the magnetic mount, because that adds extra height um, to it on top of you know, the camera body. On a chest mount for mountain biking, it won't be so bad. But again, you have to take into account the lens vulnerability if you happen to fall off the bike or if dirt and mud fly up and, and damage it. So in terms of usage, it's much more akin to the Insta360 uh, one inch 360 camera that was available a few years ago. Um, it's much smaller than that camera um, and in fact has a much higher quality image, much more detailed image, much higher resolution. So I think this will probably suit people who are doing holiday videos and perhaps people who are doing 360 stills uh, for tours, you know, for Google Maps and um, housing sales, perhaps, you know, it might be useful for that. So in conclusion, if you're not going to punish your camera, if you're just interested in more day-to-day -day stuff or professional usage, like I say, in some aspects of um, doing 360 imagery for touring and, and you know for virtual tours and things, then this camera will suit those purposes very well um, if you're careful not to damage the lenses. But for me personally, on the kind of use that I would put this camera to, I'm just too concerned about, about damaging it and completely destroying it. Which is a shame because I had really high hopes for this camera, um, 
but as an action camera, as it is being marketed as an action camera, um, it has too many um, drawbacks for me to recommend it in that regard. 